Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship this day, both those of us who are here, physically here, and those that are worshiping online. It's good to be together in worship and fellowship. We particularly welcome the uh, any guests or visitors who might be here. We hope you find a spirit of community and fellowship and, and reach out to those around you and uh, we'll, we'll welcome you here with us to this day. Um, I would call your attention to the announcements in the bulletin. Um, also, happy Mother's Day. Uh, I hope this, and thank you, it's a day of gratitude to all those who mother. And uh, I know it's a day of uh, rich emotion for so many, so much emotion, but it's a, hopefully it's a day of celebration and gratitude to all the mothering that happens, uh, regardless of gender. Uh, and I will call your attention to the uh, other announcements in the bulletin. Uh, the the uh, patio sale coming up on May 14th. Uh, information there, contact Mary Jo if you want to be a part of that and come and participate. COVID test, COVID, COVID antigen test. We still apparently have a lot of those here at the church. The worship committee did some research this week and found that um, the expiration dates, the FDA has come out with notification that the FDA, that the, not, the expiration dates on the tests we have is actually extends about three months. So if you pick up one that says July, or if you have one that says July, it's good till October. So get, get more if you want to, they're still good. Um, also, just a reminder that if you're here in worship on Sunday and then later in the week you find out that you test positive for COVID, please let the office know so we can, uh, with, with confidentiality, let the rest of us know so we can be careful and be responsible citizens if you, if you do test positive. Youth group meets on the 15th, not this Sunday, but next Sunday. Um, and other announcements here. Are there any other announcements this morning that I'm missing? Oh, one other thing. I finished my uh, official patio chats. The dates are all over. But a couple of people have asked me, said, oh, I'm going to come do that again. I don't have any set up, but I, I'll try to set up a few more in the future. And again, if you, if you didn't catch, I got a lot of visitors on my patio chats, which was wonderful. But if you weren't able to come and you still want to visit with me sometime, reach out and we'll set up a time. Or I'll set up some more times coming up soon. Anything else? All right, let us continue our worship this morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Miracles happen all around us. We
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me in the right paths for his name's sake. Let us join together in this responsive prayer of confession. God, we know that you do lead us in the right paths. Yet there are times afraid to follow paths for fear of what we might find. There are times when we turn away from your paths because we do not want to see where you are leading us. We do not want to face the needs to which you call us. Forgive us when we fail to minister in your name. Lead us again on the paths you would have us follow. Friends, in Jesus Christ, we are restored. Through Christ and with Christ, we walk the paths to which we are called. In Jesus Christ, we have new life. Thanks be to God. Now, friends, I invite you to take the peace that has been given to you and to turn around and face your neighbor and give them a sign of peace. The peace of Christ be with you. Now, friends, we have the privilege of welcoming a new member in worship today. And so, Nancy, I want to invite you to come forward along with Amity, our elder. And Amity, you can unmute this mic right here. Come on up. You want everyone to see you. There you go. Um, this is Nancy Bell, everyone. Nancy is, um, I'm going to want to tell you a little bit about her before we go into our liturgy. If you look in that pink insert, we're going to be using that in just a minute. Um, Nancy is a Bay Area native. She was born in San Francisco and raised in Redwood City, so she knows this area really well. She's a uh, part Hawaiian, and some other interesting facts is she worked for um, the Adult Probation and Police Department and also opened a daycare for about 12 children as part of her working career. Uh, she loves to bake and dance, and sometimes at the same time. <laughs> Um, and she says that the best part of her life right now is being grandma to Tano, Tana, Juno, and Grady Clark, and that her greatest accomplishment in life is bringing her daughter into the world. And some of you might know her too. Malia Clark is her daughter. <laughs> and so Nancy's been joining us for worship for a few years now, and so we're so glad that we are able to receive you as a new member today. And now, let us join together in the responsive litany for reception of new members. The church is a family of people with a variety of gifts, united by the spirit revealed in Jesus of Nazareth. By this spirit, we are joined in caring, forgiving, helping, and loving one another. Thanks be to God. The church is the people of God with a diversity of needs, ideas, and visions, inspired by the spirit burning through the words and deeds of Jesus, as told in the scripture. By this spirit, we are opened to the world and all people as our siblings in faith. Thanks be to God. The spirit of Christ restores and redeems creation, bringing order out of chaos, unity in the midst of di disunity, life in the midst of death. Thanks be to God. 
And now, Nancy. Will you, be a, will you be a faithful member of this congregation and share in its worship and ministry? And will you, through your fellowship, study, and service, seek to fulfill your calling as a disciple of Jesus Christ? We do. Friends, let us pray. Holy God, we praise you for calling us to be a servant people and for gathering us into the body of Christ. We thank you for choosing to add to our number siblings in faith and particularly give you thanks for Nancy today. Thank you for the gifts that she brings to this community just by being who she is as your beloved child. Together, may we live in your spirit and so love one another. Uphold Nancy by your Holy Spirit this day and continue to give her the spirit of joy in your presence now and always. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Nancy, we welcome you to this congregation and to its worship and ministry. We're so glad that you are here. We have you. <laughs> Our Old Testament lesson for this morning, in case you hadn't figured it out already, is taken from the book of Psalms, number 23, the ter 23rd Psalm. Listen for God's word. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. This is the word of God.
Now would the children like to come forward for the children's sermon? Hi. Thank you for coming up here. Good morning. How are you? I like your mask. Hi. Thanks for coming up. I've, I'm really excited that I get to do this and get to know you. Now, um, please feel free to tell me your names when I meet you and stuff. My name is Evie or Pastor Evie, Reverend Evie, whatever you want to call me. Um, and I look forward to getting to know you more. But Mary Jo um, and I agreed that I get to do this today. So I'm going to share the children's sermon time with you. I wanted to ask you, so what is today besides Sunday and May? Yes, yes. Mother's Day. Did you do some fun things at your house this morning for Mother's Day? Yeah. So, so what? Um, I was thinking about Mother's Day. What makes a mother? What? What's a yes? A mother is someone who takes care of a child, right? That's a female. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Usually, that's that's right. Sometimes somebody can be a mother even if they're not a female. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Any other? What else? What else? What else does, do your mothers do? The mothers you know, what do they do? Yeah. They feed you. They take care of you. Yes. They do the laundry. Yeah, yeah. Yes. They, they fix your breakfast and lunch for you. Yeah. Do they ever... Do they ever um, discipline you, correct you. Yes, yes. Sometimes they do that. Yeah, not, not too much. Well, that's good. Yeah, so I was thinking about mothers and what makes a mother, and you're right. All those things you're, you said make a mother, but other people do those things for us too, right? Not just the, the people who give birth to us. That's, that's a most common definition, huh? But yeah, Sometimes people adopt. That's right. That's right. And, you know, sometimes, sometimes men or fathers or brothers or, or sisters or grandmothers or other people in our lives, teachers, they mother us too by that definition. They take care of us. They keep us safe. They teach us. They set boundaries for us. Yes. <laughs> That's true. Usually younger brothers and sisters probably don't do a lot of teaching for you, do they? No. Oh, are you her older brother? No, sister, older sister, yeah? <laughs> well, sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, you're her sibling, right? You're her older sibling. Very good. Well, um, so what I was thinking about when I thought about this is, you know, sometimes Mother's Day is a hard day for some people because mothers, being a mother is complicated, and we have complicated relationships with mothers or mothering or children, or, and, and that makes it hard. But I was thinking today that mothers, mother's Day is a day to give thanks for all the people who take care of us, who love us, who show us God's love. There's a couple places in the Bible where God is, it says God is like a mother. So mothering happens all around us all the time. All, and in fact, I was thinking all these people out here, all these people around, um, mother us. They love us. They, yes. That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah, the scripture defines him in a certain way, but Jesus, God comes to us and loves us through the person of Jesus, but also through a lot of other people, huh? Men, women, not, yes. That's right. People call Jesus a he because he came down as a male. But God comes down to us through lots of different people, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. When my children were little, I, a lot of times, I, instead of saying our father, I'd say our mother. Just to, re to remind me and, every, and the rest of our family that God 
is like a mother, like a father. God's love for us is, comes in all different shapes and forms. And so what I wanted us to do, th- a little bit later, I, I learned recently, or today, learned today that there are flowers, there are going to be flowers um, for people to have in, in gratitude and thanks that people can take. And they can be anyone and all the people here, whoever wants a rose, there are roses following worship, for, for anyone to take if you'd like to take one. In appreciation and gratitude for the love and caring that you give to these kids and to one another. So um, Mary Jo has made something that we're going to share, that you guys can help share. First of all, I'm going to share with you guys, and then I want you guys to hold it up for everyone else to see. Okay. Lift it up. Okay, now, now everybody turn around slowly. Turn around so the choir can see it. Hold it, hold it, and go. Go all the way around. Keep going. Keep going all the way around. Whoa. All right. Thank you. Yes. So this is a day, Mother's Day is a day that we say thank you to all the people who care for us. And they do the very best they can caring for us. Not perfect, but the very best they can in loving and caring for us. So let's say a prayer. I will say a prayer, and then you can go to your Sunday school class, church school class. Let's pray. God, God, we give you thanks for the love that you give to us. And the way all the people who love us and share your love with us by loving us. Thank you for the members of this church and for all the people who teach us and love us and show your love in so many ways. Amen. Okay. Great. Thank you. Now you can go to your church school class. Oh. So still getting used to announcements. I forgot one announcement that, that's important, but you probably all saw it. The other side of that pink insert, the, the um, delivered, the men's mission and ministry, is delivering meals next Saturday, and I guess the reservations start tomorrow, and what I've heard already is they go fast. So um, just another announcement. Our second scripture reading for today is from the book of Acts, Acts 9, verses 36 to 43. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lida was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them, and when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them aside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her, showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, Peter stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. The word of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Teaching and faithful God, fill us with your spirit as we listen for your word for us this day. Open us to you and to one another. Amen. I would imagine that most of us here have had a pretty good bit of exposure to the 23rd Psalm, our suggested reading from the Psalms for today. Maybe for some of us it was our memory verse when when we were in middle school confirmation class. Maybe the words of the Psalm take us to a memorial service for one we love. 
Maybe for you, the words just come out naturally in a song. Or maybe it's a passage from scripture that is accompanying you right now through your own green pastures or darkest valleys. I read a commentary recently who suggested that the reason the psalm is so powerful for us is that it is both present and personal. Present in that most all of the verbs, the action words here, are in the present tense. Lord, the Lord is, is my shepherd who leads, restores, comforts, prepares, anoints, now. And personal, the Lord is my shepherd. I fear no evil. You prepare a table for me. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. There is an intimacy and immediacy about this psalm that brings God close in a way that both comforts and, and empowers. As I prepared for this morning, reading through the suggested text for the day, there was another passage that took hold of me as well, though, and would not let me go. That's, it is this story from Acts that we read together. The book of Acts just always pulls me in. It, too, seems so present and personal. Each year on the Sundays following Easter, our suggested scripture readings for worship take us on a journey through the book of Acts. The book, officially titled The Acts of the Apostles, is most commonly understood to be written by the same person who wrote the Gospel of Luke. There is some difference of opinion on the authorship, but it's often seen in a sense as Luke's part two in the story of God's saving work in the world through the person of Jesus Christ. The Gospel of Luke is the story of Jesus' life and ministry. Acts is the story of what happens next. The writer of Acts paints a vivid picture of the people and the times of Jerusalem and the surrounding areas in the time of Jesus. If we let our imaginations get go, we can almost feel the, the dust on our feet and the push and the shove of people in a marketplace, the taste of the meals around a common table when we read Acts. We see here in the story of Acts that the what happens next following the resurrection of Christ, is born and grows out of an ordinary group of people in the midst of life, not that unlike our own. For centuries, Christian communities like ours here at Stone Church of Willow Glen have lifted lessons from the pages of Acts regarding how to live together in community, handling disputes, how to handle disputes when they arise, listening to the Spirit for guidance, setting up systems for meeting the needs of congregation members and the larger community. Deacons are born in the book of Acts. Acts is the book that in many ways gives us guidance on how to be a Christian today. It is the, the ordinariness, the familiarity, the intimacy of the settings in Acts that makes the stories and events of Acts all the more powerful. We see that it is right there in the midst of people's lives, their personal and present, that the Holy Spirit comes and moves and brings life. This morning's story of Tabitha and Peter is a vivid example of this. The book of Acts begins with some sweeping narratives before it gets down to the personal. First, there's the ascension of Jesus. The disciples gathered in Jerusalem following the report of the resurrection. And Acts 1 says that for 40 days, Jesus presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, speaking to them about the kingdom of God. Finally, the story says, the faithful asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? They were expecting an imminent second coming when God would bring the kingdom as they knew it. It's the land, the power, the authority back to God's chosen people. Jesus responded to this, it's not for you to know the times, but you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and throughout the world. You will be God, present and personal in the world. And then the story says, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of sight. Next comes the story of Pentecost which we will celebrate in a few weeks. 
After the ascension, the followers were waiting, praying, and wondering, I imagine, about the, what this power of the Holy Spirit would look like. One day, when they were all together in Jerusalem, it happened. Suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and the Holy Spirit was upon them and within them, and they began, just began, mind you, to understand that all of this was not an end, but a beginning. The book of Acts continues with the story of how the Holy Spirit worked in that community and the lives of those people. Our passage for this morning tells a story of Peter. Remember Peter, the disciple about whom Jesus says, on you I will found my church. He was the rock and also the one who denied Jesus the night before he was crucified. Followers of Jesus are a com complex bunch, aren't we? In this part of Acts, Peter is doing some missionary work, sharing the news of Jesus Christ. The verses just preceding what we read say that Peter went here and there among the believers. He was out among the people. In today's passage, we find Peter healing in the name of Jesus in the town of Lydda. The faithful in Joppa, nearby, had just lost a dearly loved member of their community. They heard Peter was near, and so they sent for him. Maybe he could give them some comfort and prayers in their time of grief. What happens next is a miracle story, certainly. Where there was death, now there is life. It's an unusual miracle story, though, both for what is included and what is left out. We hear no mention of Jesus Christ or the Holy Spirit. The presence of God seems to be inferred through Peter. And there are no witnesses other than Tabitha. It says Peter excluded the mourners from the upper room. And then there is all that detail about Tabitha. She was a disciple. In fact, this is the only place in all of Scripture where the Greek word for disciple is given in the feminine form. She led a welfare program in Joppa, providing for the powerless and unprotected of her day. And she was a friend, deeply loved by many. She was clearly a leader in that church community. The story is so real and down to earth. It's almost as if we were there in that home in Joppa weeping with those widows at the loss of this woman so respected and so loved. And then Peter came, and he spoke to her, and Tabitha, who was dead, is now alive. We could debate exactly what happened that day in the upper room in Joppa, but for the Christians in the time of Acts, the answer is clear. God was there, present and personal, through the message of Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit in the man Jesus, Peter, in the, in the man Peter, and there was life again. Where all life had gone and hope had gone away, there was once again life. Through Jesus Christ, life abounds, hope abounds, resurrection happens, new life happens, right here in our midst. This Easter season, 2022, our present, we know well places where life and hope seem no more. Where, like Tabitha, voices for peace and compassion seem to be dying, while fear and suffering and injustice ravage on. We see the news about refugees with no place to go, political battles that seem to only tangle us further into mistrust and animosity, war violence, prejudice, injustice, fear. And like the widows in Joppa, we weep. Our passages for this morning, the 23rd Psalm and the story of Peter and Tabitha, remind us again that the death and hopelessness we may feel are not the end of the story. In Jesus Christ, in the Holy Spirit among us, we know God, present and personal. And that makes all the difference. In the ordinary people and events of our lives, the Peters among us, even sometimes within us, 
Christ comes. Life comes. Resurrection happens. Miracles happen. This is the message of Easter. This is the good news of, this te- of these texts. Through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, God at work through Peter, through you and me, God is present and personal, and miracles can and do happen. Where there is no hope, hope is renewed. Where there is pain and suffering, injustice and death, life comes again. This Easter season and always, may we hear and see this truth, receive it ourselves, and may we also proclaim it and live it with our lives. Amen. And now, friends, in gratitude to God, we give of the ordinary gifts of our lives, trusting that God will make them extraordinary for our community and for this world. And so let us now receive our morning offering. Please pray with me. Mothering, gracious and loving God, we know there are bodies aching with hunger today. We know there are bodies bearing scars of discrimination. There are bodies living in social isolation. We long to be a part of your healing work wherever there is pain and brokenness. Receive these offerings and bless them and our lives to the service of all your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
As we come again before you in prayer, we thank you for the ways in which who you are is made known to us. From the breeze that kisses our cheeks to warm sun rays that fall upon our heads, the smell of blossoms along the path, and the comforting sound of a familiar hymn or a cooing baby. That hand that reaches out and gives ours a quick squeeze. For these moments and the ways in which they reveal to us more of who you are, we give you thanks. We are so grateful, and we begin by asking that you would help us to know these holy moments when they occur. Help us to be present to them. God, this morning we take a deep breath, and we release it, recognizing that we come to this moment with so much on our hearts and minds. There's a lot to talk to you about, oh God. And we come as individuals and as the community with those questions, requests, grief, joy, and wonderings. And we're so glad that you care about all of it. We are grateful that you are expansive and that you expand us. And so we come again to this time to lift up an aching world and aching earth. We keep praying for peace, that swords would be turned into plowshares and that we would learn war no more. We especially lift up all those who have been displaced due, due to violence and war, for refugees, migrants, and for those seeking asylum. Give them a place to call home, even as they have been forced away from theirs. Teach us again and again to see and advocate for the humanity of each person, those we meet, and those we will never encounter. Loving creator and holy parent, on this day that celebrates mothers, we are also mindful that today there are so many women who are frightened, angry, and confused by the strong possibility of policies that will affect our reproductive rights and freedom. God, it is because we embrace the sacred life that you have given to each of us that as a progressive Christian community, we seek to ensure that scope and fullness of life is for all people, especially women and all those who can become pregnant. Help us to see and know and educate ourselves through a wider lens of how this will affect particularly women, especially women of color and marginalized communities. Keep us in a posture of prayer, O oh God, even as we take action. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the midst of everything difficult and discouraging, God, help us to keep hope alive. Lead us beside those still waters. Give us the time and space to walk and breathe beside it with you. May this time of worship and prayer be part of the renewal we might need to fill our cup so that we can continue in the work of love, justice, and peace in this world and in this land. We pray all these things trusting you to abide with us through all of it. And so receiving that now, hear us as we pray together the prayer that Christ taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
God present and personal in our lives, in our hearts. And may we share that present and personal love of God in all that we do and say, walking always sure of the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the abiding, life-changing presence of Jesus Christ. Amen.